So we just finished the Division A International Speech and Evaluation Contest. That was my high performance leadership project. It went okay. Uh, Jim Sultan, three times distinguished Toastmaster, past district governor, past international director, said, yeah, it was one of the better contests I've ever been to. So I figured that's pretty good praise. So it came off. But this is not so much about a victory lap as my telling you what I learned by doing this project. The first lesson is one that I mentioned at the end of the contest for those of you who were there. If you want to up your game in speaking, you enter the contest. If you want to up your game in leading, you organize the contest. It's a great opportunity to get a bunch of people together, to get them all moving in the same direction towards a common goal. I was reminded that having a bunch of volunteers working on a project for you is entirely different from having a bunch of people working for you who you can fire, <laughs> <laughs> which I did for a long time professionally. But the thing that I carried forward from being a professional project manager is I really am good at being a servant leader. I tend to ask rather than tell. And in a volunteer situation, that's the right way to do it because you have to get everybody cooperating. So a good friend of mine said that the, once said that the major lesson out of every armed conflict is maintenance doesn't get done, maintenance doesn't get done, and maintenance doesn't get done. And so the three things that I learned here are plan early, plan early, and plan early. I started planning how the contest was going to work before I had my high performance leadership project committee completely constituted. So I had a chance to do some back off and retries of different ideas after I had advice from that committee. The next two things are the, are the real guts of the lesson I learned. Pick good people and let them do stuff. For example, I had my fellow area directors take care of some aspects of the contest. So I asked Bob King and James Harmon to deal with food. Boom, done. I just didn't have to think about it after that. I asked Jim Sultan to be the contest toastmaster. Jim took care of all of the paperwork with the contestants. Julie Randall, who has been the district chief judge for a couple of years, just took care of recruiting judges, took care of all of the judge paperwork, and I didn't have to worry about any of that stuff. So by handing those things off, I could concentrate on recruiting other volunteers, and I was helped in that by Stephanie Hooper and Rebecca Murray, and they made sure that there was some geographic distribution in people filling the other roles in the contest. Always remember to thank the volunteers. Mike Hayden, who was the chief district judge for a number of years, instituted the chocolate standard. He made sure that volunteers got paid in good chocolate. <laughs> but I also made sure that I wrote every one of them an effusive note thanking them personally. The other thing that I was reminded of from my days managing professional projects is spreadsheets are your friend. I had a spreadsheet for contestants, I had a spreadsheet for volunteers, I had a spreadsheet for judges. And that allowed me to keep track of who had responded to my email, whose paperwork I had on hand, and who I had to poke later. But the most important lesson here, 
the one that you want to keep in mind any time you take on a project like this on a volunteer basis is have fun. If you aren't having fun, there's just no point in doing it. And this project was a lot of fun to do, and I, the contestants had a lot of fun. So it was worthwhile for all of us. And I'd encourage you to take on a project like this on your own at some point. Mr. Toastmaster.